first of all, I, I think I what I heard is that the data sharing and the standardization for repositories or, or, or biobanking is being discussed in parallel, which I think is a very good idea. Um, we are currently also setting up um, governance structures, both for the data sharing as well as for the biobanking component, so sample sharing. And we actually think in the direction to combine this into one governance board, also for just workload in, in the consortium, in, in the Zika Alliance consortium. And that might mirror what's going on in the other three, uh, other two consortia. So that means that, that it's not only data sharing, it's also um, sample sharing or repositories. And of course here, we th there are different rules in different countries. There are national leg legislations. So it's a little bit more complicated as sending, sending data across borders um, compared to sending samples across borders. And these complications also for us as scientists sometimes are quite, uh, they, they, they compromise our work. And from that angle, I would really appreciate the, the growing standardization from the um, perspective of the funders. And if Catherine says that now we have a club of 626 funders and we are trying to extend this harmonization and standardization, I can only welcome this. Also because it might make our work much easier in the future. And I have many examples um, where I could imagine this very beneficial. It, it's on material transfer agreements, it's on the um, Nagoya um, Declaration and, and uh, um, biodiversity, which also concerns viruses. So can we just receive viruses from other countries? Does this fall under these, un, under these laws? And uh, also with regard to ethics clearances in different countries. I think that this ongoing harmonization and standardization, we can really benefit from as researchers. And, and this is something I would like to put forward when it comes to the um, barriers we face with regard to data sharing. I think there is a benefit package as well. And I hope that that benefit package would be made available in the same time frame as the, let's say, um, standards are more and more imposed or adapted on, on research because that would kind of leverage and, and uh, really uh, motivate people to become part of that data sharing when at the same time there is a benefit package of standardization that makes life easier for researchers. and. Um, I've been looking at, at uh, biobanking publications lately, and there are some that say, okay, if we can't standardize biobanks as a whole because it doesn't make sense, what we really need is to have a very good documentation of the metadata. So how were samples collected and under which circumstances, how long did it take for them to go to the freezer, when and uh, what are the transport times and so on. And I think the same will in some way apply for clinical data. So 100% harmonization might be very difficult to achieve, but in these circumstances, a very good documentation of the metadata of the clinical SOPs on and, and of uh, the, the information how, sam how, how data were collected would help us a lot. And, and this is something we are probably going to go forward with or suggest also in these discussions. Um, then the last part of, of Catherine's presentation I thought was really interesting when it comes to um, what is actually the critical data that is needed in public health emergencies. So first I want to say that, okay, data sharing, we're talking about data sharing in public health emergencies. Are we only going to do it in public health emergencies or is this just a training run to extend it later to other areas? I don't think we have to respond to that right now, but it seems to me that what we are doing is something that might be applicable for data in general, even, even if it's not a public health emergency. But of course, we have to say why we need to share. Um, what I'm a little bit, or I don't know right now how it's going to work, is who is going to define 
which question is a critical question that we need to answer in a public health emergency. Because that will differ, as Catherine said, from the next yellow fever epidemic to the Zika epidemic to Ebola. It's not going to be the same information. And so somebody will need to rapidly make this assessment and then come up with a, a list of, of data that is really crucial now for this ongoing epidemic. And the scientists will also need to agree somehow that this assessment is right. Because if, if there's a group of scientists that think that the, the, this data set that now is being requested to be necessary in a, in, a, in a public health emergency, if some scientists think that it's actually um, motivated by other motives and uh, that it's not reflecting the real scientific approach, then there might be a problem. So I think it must, must be a trusted group of people that defines in a given public health emergency what this uh, crucial data set is that's needed now. And I would really like to hear more about the, the thoughts around this, also about the methodology. Who is, is there some kind of Delphi or public approach or um, collaborative approach uh, possible in the, in the shortness of time to determine which questions in a given public health emergency are most urgent, most pressing to answer and which data to collect? But um, the, the mechanisms, how to decide which data is now crucial and that needs to be shared, I am not certain about, about and I would like to have more input um, from people who have thought about it a little longer, how that could work. And with, with that, I'm going to close for now. Thank you.